get back to the regularly scheduled programming. So thank you guys. Um, so finally, we're having Shelly Rappaport speak. As you know, she was originally scheduled in January and there was a, a scheduling uh, challenge. And so we've gotten her back on the calendar in March. We are over the moon. As you know, she does the uh, catering at Brishalom when you know we have in-person events. So all of us are, are familiar and have enjoyed her cooking. And we just feel absolutely thrilled that she's sharing two recipes with us today. So with that, um, over to you. Hi guys, hi everybody. I wish hi. I can see you in person. Maybe sooner than later, we're gonna have it. But in the meantime, we're gonna start, I'm gonna start showing you how to make two items. One is a falafel and one is shakshuka. I'll work a little bit on both for two seconds. And time then- out, Time out, time out. If we try to put you on speaker view, your blank screen is what shows up on speaker view that just says your ah. name, not Shelly up close. I can explain that. That is because Shelly is going through the very high technology experience of having two screens. So the one that's filming her video is far from her and it's on mute. And then there's another device that's doing the filming. So you actually need to pin, you know, click on those little dots in the upper right and pin the one that's with her image and then you'll be okay. That's what I have going on on my screen. Uh, ah, thank you. I didn't know that. Ooh, la la. Thank, thank you, thank you. <laughs> ooh, ooh. Okay. Thank you. So if before, I'm starting today with the, with the falafel, but before I, show you the falafel. I want to show you what I did for the shakshuka. I bought seven tomatoes. I put it in regular water. Now I'm turning this on and let it boil. When it's going to be ready to do it, it's going to peel very fast. So this is the only thing that we're going to do together. So I put a pot of water with seven tomatoes let it boil and then I'll show you exactly how it feels without any problem. Now let's go move to the falafel. I'm using Goya and we need to use the dry uh, garbanzo bean. Do not use the cans. The cans have some chemicals inside and it's not coming the same. I tried it and it was easier, but it's not coming the same. So I buy this one. I put it in water overnight, filled up the pot with water, add some about one teaspoon of baking powder, put it in the refrigerator overnight, then touch it. In the morning, I took out the water and let me show you the difference between, if you can see, the difference between those garbanzo beans and those, they're like double the size. Don't cook them, don't do anything. Just put it in order, take it out, rinse it, and you're done. So baking powder or baking soda? Baking powder for the garbanzo beans. Okay. Baking powder, just one teaspoon of baking powder, that's it. Now, what does the baking powder do? It just it makes it a little bit uh, fluffier and doesn't have to go together, doesn't stick together. And that's it. You cannot, that's all it does. Baking powder helps for a lot of things. So in just one teaspoon, that's all you need. Now, the ingredients for that, for the falafel, and I'm going to start with the wet stuff. It's cilantro, fresh parsley. Again, everything fresh. I don't think we use any dry ingredients in those in the in the falafel. So garbanzo bean, parsley, cilantro, onion, half an onion, and four cloves of garlic. What I do. I put some of the garbanzo beans in the food processor. Cut 
The onion, you don't need to cut it small. It's going through the food processor. You can cut it in four, in five, and put a piece, a few pieces in the food processor. Add some parsley, add some cilantro. Don't use any of the dry ingredients. And now mix it together. Let the food processor do its job. If that dog isn't at Shelly's house, could you mute your device? Can you hear me? I yes. can. There's a dog barking. I just wasn't sure if that was at your house or someone. That was my that was dog. Okay. Uh, we put our dogs upstairs. So they're, go they're quiet right now. Okay. Now I'm doing it again. And while I'm going to do the food processor, I'll put in this part some oil so we can fry the falafel, but the oil has to be very, very hot. So while we're doing, while we're doing another one, I think one more set is gonna be okay. One more time. You don't have to do the whole bag, but what Wait. I do, I twist it. And wait, Shelly, can I, can I pause you for, wait, wait, yes. Shelly, I'm going to pause you for a sec, because people are still struggling. Is there, is there anyone that still is having a hard time seeing Shelly's audio? Let me kind of interrupt for a little IT help. Gail, are yes, you Yes, I am. I tried yes. pinning it and nothing happened. Okay, so um, I am, so let's see, I'm going to go to gallery view. I okay. would, let's see, I'm going to do share screen. Um, and see if that works. Um, hold on now, let me see if I can move that. Um, let's see if that, no, that may not work at all. Hold on, but let me try it first. Ah, crap, okay, no, I seem to, not, okay, let me stop share. Let me see if I can figure out how to, sh how to, if I could figure out how to share my screen to share, you know what, it never assumes that you actually want to share your view. Okay, so I'm in gallery view and have like the whole like Brady Bunch with all the squares. Okay, so what I do is I click on Shelly's face. You right click on Shelly's face. Right, but when you click over it, you'll see two boxes. Well, this, I'm on a PC. I oh, see two boxes so that pop up. One says ask to unmute and one are three dots in a blue box. The people that are struggling, do you see those three dots in, yes. in a blue box? Click on those three dots. Nothing happened. Okay, it says chat or pin. Pin, what you wanna do is pin. So I pinned and nothing happened. No, you pin and point. then you go to speaker view. And if you go to speaker view, Shelly should be pinned. At least that's, that's what's working for me. You're I just have to, be no, sure I, you're right clicking guys. That could be the problem. Oh, I did not go to. Be sure you do the right click, not the left side. Right, it's right click on the three dots. No, for me, it's a left click to hit pin. But anyway, oh, but just you, I, you, right -click to, you right click to see the options and then you mm -hmm. left click to select. Okay, but, and I actually see a pin icon next to Shelly's face. Gail, are you on a PC or are you on a Yeah, I'm on a PC. Oh. Okay, I'll, do I right click on pin? Because not, nothing happens. No, I left click on pin. Gail, if you actually just go over the image of the person's face, and you just right click. A I don't have open. the image of Shelly's face. That's the problem. I have Are you in gallery? Shelly on here. It just says Shelly, big black, big white letters, Shelly. Guys, I, have, 
I think if, if you can't. If you went to the EM, if you're on a phone, Shelly, it's, Shelly's it's too complicated, I think. Doing stuff. Just keep going. I think. Gail, I, Gail, I'll run a text. I'll run a chat with you off to the side and try and guide. That's you a good idea. Because we okay, perfect. Okay. Yeah. So I'm we're concerned okay. about keep the program. Going. Keep going. Okay. okay. Sorry. Thanks. So I put the rest of the garbanzo beans in the food processor. I put the garlic and the left of the rest of the onion. Let me mix it again. I put a little bit too much together. That's why I didn't put the garbanzo beans and the parsley, but then I leave a little bit in here and put the rest of the garbanzo beans and the rest of the parsley, mix it, and we all, all done with the mixing. While we mixing that, if you can hear me, Gail, can you go to the chat, please? Do you know how to get there? I was on the chat. I didn't see anything. Okay, hang on. I'm direct messaging you. I don't know it, and it's very, very hard to, to hear me doing stuff while the food processor is working. I'm going to take everything out, and I want to tell you that I'm putting oil in the pot in a minute while this is going to work. Okay, let's put this back, and now it's going to be all done. Shelly, is there any liquid in there or not? No, no liquid. Nothing whatsoever. That the noise is over. Now, what I'm doing, I'm putting all of those ingredients together. And now I turn on the stove with the oil. Just rinse out my hands. Okay, now I'm putting about half a bottle of oil. And again, now I want to tell you a tip about that. This oil you can reuse. If it makes sure that the falafel sticks together and we'll show you how to do it, you can reuse the oil. You don't need to throw it away. So now I'm going to mix the falafel with, with the garbanzo with the parsley and everything and start putting in the spices. So I have cumin, I have salt, I have a coriander, I have red flakes, I have a black pepper, and I have one and a half tablespoon of flour. Now I'm going to add it, but if you can see on the side, I still have more flour because it might not stick together. And that's what's important. Now, when you put it in the oil, you can see if you need to add some more flour. One second. Look how I'm mixing it with my hands. It has nothing, nothing wet inside. And if you can see when I mix it, I'm gonna try to make a falafel bowl. 
you can take this uh, ice cream scoop, put it together like that, like that, and see if it sticks together. No, it doesn't. So we need to add more flour. While I'm adding more flour, I'll add another tablespoon of tablespoon of flour and try to do it again and see if it sticks together. Have you no, ever made it with have you ever made it with gluten-free flour, Shelly? No, but I'm sure you can do it. Uh, there's okay. no reason why not. Now, there's coming also over here baking powder, one teaspoon of baking powder. And I left it to the end on purpose. I wanted to see if I needed more regular flour or not. So now I think it's gonna be good. I can also do it this way. Now you have also, if you wanna buy the special uh, things to do falafel when they do it in restaurants. I don't have it here, but I can always show it to you guys. As soon as the oil is gonna be hot, this is the falafel balls that we're gonna do. Let me rinse out my hands again. Now, if you put it in a, in, on a tray and then put it in the freezer and let it freeze and then put it in separate Ziploc bags, about five or six of them at the time, you can use the oil again and make a falafel sandwich. Or falafel. falafel is very healthy. It reminds me when I used to be in Girl Scouts, Boy Scouts, which was together at that time, every Saturday night in Israel, we used to go to a place, it called Kumsitz. And somebody knows what the Kumsitz means? Uh, okay, a Kumsitz is like, Kum in Hebrew is stand up, if you translate it. And zitz in German is to sit. So there was a restaurant that called Kumsitz. Now during Lag Baomer, and just an example, we used to go to the outside and do the fire, the fire pits, and we, we used to call it Kumsitz. So now if somebody says to you, we're going for a Kumsitz, oh, you're going out, you're gonna do some hot food and especially falafel and things like that. Do you mm. see the size, guys, of the falafel? Let me throw a little bit inside the oil, see if it's boiling. It's not hot enough, but it's starting. Do you see it? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay, so let's do another one because I don't think it's there yet. While I'm doing it, I rinse my hands again. And I drop a few falafel balls. I can tell you that my family is gonna have this for dinner tonight. <laughs> so I have falafel and it sticks together. You can see. We're gonna Let what type of oil is in there? Excuse me? What type of oil is that in there? Uh, vegetable oil. Okay. Vegetable oil. No, nothing special. Regular vegetable oil, like you do French fries and things like that. I'll drop another one. Here we go. Here we go. Let it sit. And I'll show you. Okay. Now let it fry. Take a spoon and let me show you how we're going to serve it. 
And when it's going to be ready, when it's going to be ready, we usually eat it with pita bread. You can put it in the pita. If the pita is easy to open, you can put it in the pita. You can cut the pita in half. And then you have hummus, which is homemade hummus and Israeli salad. Now, as soon as that's gonna be ready, we're gonna put it here and this is your falafel. Any questions about the falafel? Hey Shelly, if you're not gonna eat it right away, like you said, you're having it for dinner, what do you do to it so it doesn't taste greasy later and it tastes fresh later? Uh, later, I will give it three, four hours. That's all. You know, a lot of people used to ask me, please make falafel at Brit Shalom a day before. And I always said no. It can be good for about three, four hours. You can put, pop it in a microwave for a minute and that's gonna be perfect, but not for the next day. So I, that's why I didn't do all of them. If you can see here, I left it. Later, we're gonna do some bowls. They'll decide how many they want for dinner and then the rest goes in the freezer. Let me come over here, please. And let's move this a little bit. It's still, you see it? Now, if you wanted to have it a little bit more green, the cilantro and the parsley, you can put as much as you want, not like a lot, but you definitely can put a cup and a half if you want. If you don't like cilantro, use parsley or use both of them. Some people don't like cilantro and some people don't like parsley. Uh, I like both of them. So it was two questions, Shelly. What? I have yes. two questions. Yes, go ahead. Okay, I'm gonna ask you both. The first question is, can you use carrots? And the second question is, and this is I know gonna a little ridiculous, but I'm gonna ask it anyway. Is there a way of cooking it that's not in oil? Yes, no. that's my question too. No, you cannot cook it not in oil, then it's not falafel, it's not gonna work. But what I found out when you cook it in hot oil and deep, it's not so greasy. The same thing when I make schnitzel or I made the tzitzot, if you do it in hot oil and it's deep oil, even the French fries, if it's in deep oil, and you take it out, it's not so greasy. Because if it I cooks take faster? It, excuse me? It cooks faster on the outside? Yes. Is that yeah. Okay. It cooks faster and it's not so greasy, guys, really. Um, you know, as sometimes people ask me if I can make a, a latkes mm -hmm. a, in the oven. So I say, yes, I can, but it's not gonna be lactose, it's gonna be a potato kugel. Uh -huh. So, you know, there are certain times a year that you need to eat a little bit more fried. <laughs> but here we go, a little bit. Okay. Here you go. I'm gonna take it out in a minute. What about the carrots? How about a carrot? Um, the truth, I never tried it, but why not? Why not? What can a carrot make? Why not? I would put a carrot. There is no reason why you shouldn't be able to do this. No reason. Put a small carrot, shred it together with the rest of the stuff. It cannot hurt. Here we go. Here's the falafel. I put it in a, a, a tray. Here we go. And if you look, I'm gonna clean the oil a little bit and that's it. Then you can strain it and we are gonna use it for tonight. Here the falafel. And here's the plate that we can serve dinner. Oh, oh my God. God. Sorry. Here this? we go. Oh my God. Can you all so see it? It was so good. That looks beautiful. I want it. Where's the pickles? What time is dinner? Yeah, where's the pickles? Okay, I'll bring you the pickles in a minute. I don't think the girls like pickles, so I try to do everything that they like. Don't you know? 
Okay, why any questions about the falafel? Because there is another good dinner coming up. Did did you make the 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 the, the uh, pita yourself? This pita, no. no. Okay. I used to, guys. If somebody knows me from the JCC, I used to do pita. Not now, no. Uh, definitely not for this amount. But the hummus I made, and uh, and the Israeli salad I made. Now the hummus is made from garbanzo beans. The same way like you did the falafel. You, buy, you do garbanzo bean and you add some trina. Trina is sesame seed. And this is how the hummus comes out. Okay, if no more questions, I'm moving to the next one. If you remember a few minutes ago, I put the tomatoes to boil and so I can peel them. So here we go. You can look how easy it is to, you see? The tomato is all peeled. I don't even need to use my hands. It comes out with the tongue. You see it, guys? Yes. Amazing. Yes. Okay, here we go. All the tomatoes are peeled. Not all of them. I'm gonna turn it off. Let it cool off for a few minutes and show you the shawarma. No, not the shawarma. The, I don't know, today I want, apparently I want shawarma because the third time that I'm saying, the shakshuka. Uh, if you ask me what shakshuka is, the only thing I can tell you guys, the shakshuka is coming from North Africa, which is basically a Turkish, a Syria, Iraq, all those immigrants that came to Israel, they are the one that bought the shakshuka. A meaning for the shakshuka? I don't think there is any meaning. A, if you say in Hebrew, you say le shakshek, is to, to, like you do with the impurim with the rashan, that's what it is. But it has nothing to do with the shakshuka. Shakshuka is made out of tomatoes, tomato sauce, fresh tomatoes, and peppers. And then you have parsley and onions. I personally only use red peppers because a lot of people are allergic to green, all the greens. So I try not to use the green pepper, but you can do any kind of pepper you want, green, yellow, uh, red, you can do on any kind of pepper. So you put uh, three tablespoons of olive oil. This is about it, that's what it is. And I'll show you, I chopped some of the peppers, but then I'm gonna chop another set of peppers. So I'm gonna let the tomatoes cool off so I can dice them too. And the another ingredient in here is the jalapeno. Again, you do not need to use jalapeno, but if you like it a little bit spicy, you can use jalapeno. The onion in this case has to be diced, not small, but small enough, not like in the falafel that we didn't need to dice it at all. It was half an onion here and half an onion in the falafel. I like to have shakshuka for breakfast and for lunch. And you know, if you have a lot of company, you can always prepare it in advance, the sauce, put it in the freezer again in portions if you like, and then uh, just add the eggs and it's all done. Okay, now let me, oh, this is a little bit warm. <coughs> a little bit hot, not hot. <coughs> Let me turn on the, <coughs> I turned on the oil. I'm adding the tomatoes and the onions and the, not the tomatoes, the peppers and the onions. 
with the rest of the peppers? Now I'm gonna chop a little bit garlic. You can buy the regular garlic, but I'm telling you that everything fresh, when you use fresh items, it tastes completely different than when you buy the cans of uh, ready minced onion, uh, garlic. So I cut it small pieces and let it get a little bit brown. I like to use wooden spoons. I don't know how the rest of you, but I like always to use for all wooden spoons. Let it work. In the meantime, I'm going to try to chop some of the tomatoes. You need a juice. So any question while I'm doing that? Does it matter which kind of tomato you choose? Yeah, I use Roma tomato. Why? I think it's just better. It has more juice inside. So I use a lot of Roma tomato for a lot of my cooking. And they're also- I agree. Also, thank you. And, I, and they're not also, they're not so expensive like the other tomatoes. So for cooking, I definitely think it's perfect. So I'm gonna try to dice all of them. Add it to this because I need the juice. You need as much juice as you can. Okay. Now, what you can do, so let's assume you try, you have company and you want to prepare it in advance and you want to surprise them with some kind of a new dish. You can do everything I'm doing right now, you can do in advance, everything. Put it in a jar, put it in the refrigerator, put it in the freezer. And when you, the company is coming, you're taking it out, you put it like that on the skillet and you let it defrost. And then you have something new. So now I'm gonna show you the rest. Here we go. To that, I'm adding a can of tomato sauce, 16 ounces. I'm adding it to that. No need any water, no need anything. Let's mix it together. Shelly, can I, is this, so far it looks like this is totally fine for Passover also. Yes, it is, it has nothing it has, yes, you're absolutely 100% right. Something different for Passover. This is a great idea. Uh, not only to make matzah bar and matzah bar, right? That's what we're making for Passover, matzah bar. Mm -hmm. So that's a very hot. Um, yes, it's a great idea. So you can prepare the sauce in advance if the kitchen is ready for Passover and Go ahead, use it, perfect. You have eggs in here, which is basically all Pesach about eggs. And it's very, very hot. If you're gonna do it at the house, please take out the tomatoes, cook them, peel them, let it sit a few minutes because it's very hot, but it's fine. Here we go. Now, I am adding a little bit jalapeno, not the whole half, because my son likes it a little bit spicy. So not too much, but here we go. I added a little bit jalapeno so everybody can eat it. Here we go. Let it cook for a little bit. The jalapenos are a little bit bigger pieces because if somebody doesn't want it, they can take it out, basically. That's why I did it this way. Now, I have here red, sweet red paprika. Okay. Then I have black pepper. 
and salt. That's it. Again, the spices, you can add as much as you want. If you feel like you need a little bit more salt, you can use a little bit more salt and more pepper. Let it cook for a little bit. Let it cook for a little bit covered. Let me take this schmutz away from here. Here, let it cook a little bit. Now, I have over here also chopped parsley. Again, the parsley is all, only for decorating if you want to sprinkle it on top of it. And the way we serve it, it with a fresh challah, mm -hmm. cut challah, and in a minute, I'll add the eggs. And the shakshuka is ready. So all of this that it's over here, you can prepare a day or two or three in advance. It's not a problem. It can sit. I like to cover it for a few minutes. You see it's boiling. Now, I'm going to make a small well over here, not too much, like a little bit of small place. And I'm going to start to crack the eggs inside. One. I'm usually doing it with six eggs. That's how I'm used to do it. But you can make it with less. You can make it with more. It's not a problem. You crack the eggs. Any questions? I'm... Okay. You're going to see now when I cover it that the egg white is going to be completely white. And here you can add some more salt if you want. Or here we go. Now let it go for a few minutes. And here you have the shakshuka. Any questions until now? So I can, and I'm going to play it in a minute. I have a question. So I don't, if, can you, can you pop the egg yolk so it's not runny? And so it gets hard all the way through? Yes, when you cover it, it's gonna get all the way through. Oh, okay, okay. You see, when you leave it covered, the egg is gonna get all the way through. The longer you hold it, the longer it's gonna be. Oh, okay, so it's not supposed to be a runny egg. You can. There are people that love runny eggs, and that's why they want it with the challah, because this is what they like. But uh. when I serve it, um, Larry Estes love it, loves it. So when I serve it, when I did it a few times at Brit Shalom, I try not to do it runny. At home, it's up to you how you do it. But I served it a few times at Brit Shalom, like goodbye parties and uh, I didn't do it runny. What you can also do if you have to make a lot, you can put it in the oven, the eggs, and then uh, cover it. If you look at it right now, you see how the eggs are? Can you see it? Uh -huh. It's uh -huh. not, so, or not so runny anymore. I like it personally with runny eggs, but everybody is different. And then you can take one egg out or two eggs. And that's how they serve it in Israel. In restaurants for breakfast, they serve shakshuka. It's very, very popular. And it's really not so hard to make. I'll take it out in a minute and I'll put a little bit parsley on top of it. And this is the falafel and the shakshuka. Any questions? So you would just put the egg and the and the, the whole mixture on top of the uh, the hala. Uh, you can dip it. You can do whatever you want. Uh, you know, I like the egg soft, so I like to dip it. But the sauce is very good too. I'll take it out. I'll show it when it's not so cooked all the way, and then I'll put it to cook so the kids can eat it. Let me just oil oh, them. Okay. 
Shelly, if you made this in an iron cast iron skillet, is that is that also like no. An, no, no, you can you can do it with any skillet that you want. No, no. I want to touch. Got it. Uh, any skillet that you want. This is a good one. I like to do. Here we go. Look, guys. Oh my gosh. Mm. Yummy. Oh Yummy. My. Here you go. And if you want to sprinkle some parsley on top of it, everything fresh. Again, the key to everything that I make is I don't do any, try not to do anything from cans. Every ingredient that I use is fresh. So here we go. And better avon. I'm gonna let it stay here for a few more minutes like that. So it's, the egg is not gonna be running. So we all set. Here's lunch, brunch, and here's dinner. Here we go, guys. Very good, Sorry. thank you. Woo! Enjoy it. Fantastic. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. So hungry. <laughs> actually Shelly this is probably like the best because you mentioned before um before we started the meeting that you are going to be catering for Passover and yes. would, would you like to share a little bit about this after showing this amazing he's amazing yes dishes. so the menu for Passover first of all let me just go one word because I don't want to go history it's not going to go it's not going to be like it was last year it's a year from the time the virus started. It was a mess. We know we had a mess. Every place had a mess. They, I wasn't there because the kids didn't let me go. Nobody knew what's going on with the virus. This year, we'll, I'll be there. My kids are going to be there. The menu is very simple. Uh, the new item on the menu is... Uh, Chicken. I'm making blintzes out of matzah meat oh. blintzes matzah rolled in in uh, me in beef this is the new item completely you know ne i never had it before over here you never had it and then you have the regular stuff that we always every year make like uh, uh, the matzah ball soup ah, i'm making one more new item is kosher for Passover homemade noodles. This is my daughter's favorite. Your noodles are the best. I remember at a Bris Shalom Seder there, I was just like, these are awesome. I was going to ask you if you would share the recipe, but I'm totally happy to let you make them. They are amazing. They are Thank delicious, you. amazing, wonderful. Thank you. So uh, the, the menu uh, is coming out on... Uh, to, on Monday. Tomorrow. It's actually already up, I think, on the... Um, oh, maybe uh, my daughter put it up already. Everything is possible. We, uh, My daughter-in-law and I approved it this morning before it started, and then she said as soon as everybody approves it, she's putting it up. She needs our, uh, all three of us to approve. Another thing I want to tell you guys, if you don't know, that every week, we serving we making hot Shabbat lunches, and uh, it's in the Boker Tov newsletter, and it's on an email that goes out to as many people as we have the email address. If you like us to, if you don't get it, uh, you can ask us to take your email address and we'll send it to you, and we also deliver. There are certain people that be delivered to if they need it. Kelly, also talk about your fallout. Ah, thank you, Lisa. Uh, every week this is supposed to be a feature of, of you, like Karen said earlier. We want to thank you, Lisa. Your, your uh, yes. Celebrity chef. Every Shabbat, every Friday, we have, we, I'm making homemade halot. Uh, now, I, Larry asked me, uh, Larry, Lisa's husband, asked me to make him two smaller ones, so he doesn't need, because if there are only the two of them, two small ones, and I'm making them, and I'm happy to make it. If we look over here, this is, I made it for here too, 
if you can see, this is where I cut it. This is the small one. Not so small, but it's half of the big, uh, half of the amount of the big one. So that's perfect for two people. Add those three pieces, and this is the challah for Shabbat. Ooh. I need order by Thursday for challahs. Guys, the challahs are amazing. Mm. I, okay, now if you need something for Passover, just let me know. And if you saw the menu, if you have questions, please call me. No, no, no. Please call me. Okay, I lied. It's, the, it's not the Passover menu that I saw. It's the regular. Yeah. yeah. And something new, chicken something or other. And now every week the menu is chicken soup and mushroom barley soup and chicken and schnitzel and tzitzot. Uh, uh, I can tell you that one person, Leslie Wiener, loves the tzitzot because basically every week I have about 12 to 16 tzitzot for Leslie. Uh, it's very good. Tzitzot is, if you don't know what it is, is ground chicken which is more health, it's healthier. Ground chicken fried in deep oil, but it's like chicken croquettes, if you can call it. It's absolutely delicious. And I remember this for Passover because that's what we ate of Passover between a matzah and you can eat it cold. Um, any more questions? No, I think we're just ready to see the shakshuka. The shakshuka. Here oh, we go. So that's there. And then I wasn't sure if we were gonna you were gonna uncover the pot again. Or or eat? I, you can come over. Here's the shakshuka. Mm. Ah. Oh my and gosh, I'm say, definitely gonna make that. You can everybody can make it, and you don't need to do this amount. If you get the recipe, you can cut the amount in half. You can do, uh, instead of 16 ounce uh, tomato sauce, do eight ounce so that everything else cut down to. Spices are up to you what you put and how much you put. You can put a little bit more garlic, a little bit more to, uh, onions, but it's your taste and it's your, it's your uh, idea. So here we go. Lunch and dinner are ready. Oh, both of them are lunch, basically. We're coming over. Go ahead. The door is open with two dogs. Is it okay? Yes. <laughs> you I was going to deliver to all of us watching, you know, like the, uh -huh. the door. I know this is really hard not to be able to take. I <laughs> should have yeah. done it. It's an easy as one, two, three thing. It's so un Jewish like. <laughs> it is. Uh, <laughs> great, great. <laughs> Kelly, I know. Um, Karen mentioned earlier that you have an assistant, so I want to give. I know you, Karen, uh, had the pre the video preview. So just a kudos to your to your producer in the background. Thank you. Yeah. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Who was that? Yeah. Abby. Yes, your IT crew Abby. did a great job. Hi, Abby. Thank you. Thank you. Abby, she's here. Everybody has a chair in my family. It's, it's, something to do in my family, everybody. So if you're saying to me that the menu for Passover is out, it means it, Dana, did, Dana did her job. <laughs> no, I was, I was wrong about that. It was the, it was, a, it was still the, the regular menu, but with the new. Uh, so, okay, so it's coming out tomorrow. Tomorrow it's coming, it definitely. I love when all the Passover stuff starts coming out. It just creates my stress meter. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, when you go to the supermarket and you see everything after pouring, it starts, it starts, right? It has started. Mm. Yeah, I really miss you all. I really hope one day we go, gonna get back to more or less normal. Maybe box lunches, I don't know. We're talking about it. 